Hey guys, today we're going to head out and do some beach fishing. Uh, fishing close to the beaches during the summertime can be one of the most fun, simple, easy, and rewarding types of fishing you can do. I love it. I look forward to it all year. Uh, there's a couple keys and a couple of techniques and a couple of tricks that you need to know if you're going to go out and do some beach fishing. And it, it's really going to boost your game. It's, it's easy and, and you're going to love it. So we're going to head out and we're going to show you on the water um, what you need to know to catch these fish. Uh, some of the major species we're going to target today are kingfish, tarpon, sharks, and bonita. But there's also barracuda. A friend of mine got some dolphin the other day. And this is all shallow. It's from right at the beach out to about 90 feet of water within a mile or two ashore. Uh, there's big bait schools that get pushed into the beaches during the summertime. And with those bait attracts big predatory game fish. So it's easy, it's fun. It's really overlooked by a lot of people. So we're gonna head out right now and uh, show you guys how to do it. It's really important when you come out to beach fish to have good live baits. That is like the number one key. Don't overdo it. Don't go catch your bait the day before. Try to keep them alive overnight. Uh, they're gonna be weak. They're gonna be soft. They're probably gonna die. You're gonna be so tired. This, is, this type of fishing is just casual and fun. It's meant to be the one time a year when you can go out and catch some really cool fish, some good eating fish, some big fish. There's gonna be tarpon and kingfish and cobia. Um, it's just a really cool type of fishing. But when I was a kid, uh, I, I used to love coming out here and fishing the beaches with my dad, but we would work really hard. Um, we would try to go out the night before and get bait, and then the, we'd be tired the next morning, and then we'd come out, and we were so eager to fish, we would race out, spend 15, 20 minutes looking for pogies or looking, trying to speak up some thread fins, and if we didn't find them, we'd go with what we had. Or we would go to the bait shop and get some frozen ballyhoo as like our, our backup, like our plan B. So we would just, we would rush to fish. We would just try to get out there to fish. We would you spend a lot of money on lures and spoons and all this, you know, craziness when all we really needed was good live bait. And um, what I do is, I mean, if it, if it takes an hour or even two hours to get good live bait, you're gonna catch good fish and you're gonna fish with confidence. So, so put in the time the morning of when you get out there to sabiki up or cast net really good bait. Hunt them, run up and down the beaches, go in the ports, go on the buoys, find good bait, spend the time getting the good bait, and then you're gonna catch the good fish. When you're beach fishing, all you wanna do is match the hatch. All you need to do is catch the bait that's around and that's the bait that you're gonna use. So all you need is a cast net and a sabiki rig because you're not really sure what kind of bait you're gonna come across. But for sabiki, all you need is a simple uh, number 10 or a number eight. This is number eight. Um, I like white with a little chartreuse or red. Some have gold hooks, some have uh, red hooks, but you don't need to get too complicated. Just a nice sabiki rig. I like a sabiki rod. I can reel the sabiki right into it. Uh, what I like to do is catch about a dozen baits or so, fish, catch more baits, fish. Don't spend a whole lot of time catching bait because you're going to be fishing around the bait. That's where the big fish are. Um, for weights, grab an assortment of weights from half ounce up to about three ounce. If the current's strong or the baits are on the bottom, you want a bigger weight. If the baits are kind of nervous and the water's clear, you want to use a smaller weight. So that's about it. We're just out here catching some baits. We're getting horn bellies, uh, blue runners, some thread fins. So what you want to do when you're using these sabiki rigs is once you hook one bait, uh, just kind of leave it down there for a little while longer until it feels heavy. That way you can get more than one bait fish. There we go. Feels like we got quite a few that time. Oh yeah. When we're out here beach fishing, I like to keep um, all the baits because you don't know what the fish are going to bite the best. Um, you know, big live baits are awesome. Let's look down. I've got a few fish on that. Got a belly hook, big old thread fin. Cool little bait. Carbon kingfish love those little guys. Drop down again. A bunch of baits under the boat right here. So on the fish finder, this is what we're looking for. This is a big school of thread fin. And you can see there's all kinds of other stuff mixed in. You got some bottom dwellers down here on the bottom. And these will be the thread fins. Might be a little school of horn bellies, but we spent a good hour or so looking for baits and finally found some really good ones. And uh, we're gonna drop down the sabiki right here on that group of bait. Here, watch this. Here, look over here. 
drop the speaky down right on that big school of bait. They're pretty close to the bottom, so we're gonna go all the way down. Good feeling playing with it. It's real important that, uh, that you have good sized live baits. It doesn't really matter that much what they are. So if you catch blue runners, thread fins, you're gonna catch a variety of different baits. Keep them all, because you can always let them go at the end of the day. Uh, but, you, but you don't really want to run out and you don't know what the fish are going to bite the best. So right here today, we're catching all kinds of different bait fish and, and we're throwing them right in the live well. We don't know what the day's going to unfold, but that's my best recommendation. Don't come out here real picky and like just want blue runners or just the red fins. You know, you're going to catch a variety and do it. The best uh, big bait schools are usually off the structure. You'll see them up on the surface, but you're not always gonna find those. A lot of times the best baits are around structure, and sometimes there's not that many of them. So if I can't find bait, what I do is I go to range finders, channel markers, buoys, like this buoy behind me here, we got some really good blue runners on it. There's always gonna be good bait fish on structure, especially buoys, channel markers, things like that, in about 20 to 40 feet of water. So if you're out there running the beaches, you can't find pogies, you can't find the big schools of thread fins up on the surface, just go back to the buoys and drop down a sabiki rig. You're gonna catch bait fish, no doubt. Let me show you my favorite uh, beach fishing rig here. Um, a lot of people like conventional reels. They work pretty good, but you don't need to go overboard. You don't need to go buy special rods and reels. Just use what you got. Um, just make sure you have enough line on there for the big kingfish. They're gonna burn down a bunch of line. Uh, but you also want strong enough line for when you hook the big tarpon. So a good compromise would be about 350 to 400 yards of line. And this is this is 50 pound test on here. I've got some bigger reels, but you can drop down as low as 30, even 20 pound test. You can put them on like a 4,500. This is a 6,500 reel. I mean, most people have these, but you don't need anything special. Just 6,500 reel. 50 pound test, and then what you want to do, I'm going to walk you through this here real quick. I like to use wire, because uh, I like to catch these kingfish, they're super fun, and, it, and if you use light enough wire, it doesn't deter the uh, tarpon strikes. So kind of the rule of thumb is you want to go number four wire, number four treble hooks. We're gonna tie a stinger rig here real quick. The first part, because the water's really clear, we're gonna make it kind of short. So this is about 18 inches. So, tie a little swivel on there. Use a really small swivel. The goal is to make this rig as invisible as you can in the water. So what you wanna do, it's real important, cross that. And don't make one of these um, strands here more dominant than the other. You wanna make sure that they're, they're even. So you're gonna cross it, you're gonna twist it three times. Make sure that they're evenly twisted and one's not more dominant than the other. If it is, just kind of bend it out. You get that three, and then you're gonna kink the tag end over and do a couple of little barrel twists. You wanna make sure that it's really tight to one another so it doesn't slide. If you struggle with this, you can buy them pre-made or just go a little bit bigger on your wire. It's a lot easier. If you jump up to a number six, it's really easy to tie these rigs. So straighten that out. There you go. And then break off that tag end. Just rock it back and forth. Pops right off. Clean. Some people like to do the first hook as a, as a little J hook. Um, I usually just use two treble hooks. These are number four trebles. Do the same thing. Make sure the cross them. Make sure one's not more dominant than the other. And then you want to turn that at a 90, bend it at a 90, and then make pinch it as tight as you can with your fingertips, super tight. 
and that'll that'll allow you to uh, to roll them next to one another. Um, you want to avoid, like I just did right there, not thinking. You want to avoid it rolling up on the on itself. If you do, that's okay. Just make sure at the end there you do. You want to make sure you do at least three or four real tight to one another at the end so that this knot doesn't slide down on the hook. That'll weaken it. This is your weak point. And now you want to match the stinger. So we're making a stinger rig. You want to match the stinger length of wire to the size of bait that you're going to use. Just go right through the hook. Don't go through the wire here, your loop. Go through the hook. We're going to tie that one back on here. And so we've got blue runners and thread fins we're going to be using today. And they're not real big, so we're going to make it about a... We're going to try to put the other hook right about here, so that's where you want to make your loop. When you make these stingers, it's really important that you don't have it too long, because then your wire is going to bend up on your bait. When that wire is sitting on the back of your bait, it, your bait can't swim natural, he'll spin, it looks really bad, you're going to get way fewer strikes. So it's better to make your stinger rig too short than too long. So we're going to put it right there on that little kink. These stinger rigs are um, they're just a really good universal rig. It'll allow you to catch the toothy critters like the uh, kingfish and the sharks, but you're also able to catch the tarpon and the cobia and whatever else might swim in. So there you go, it's super simple. Make them yourself. Just single strand, number four wire, number four treble hooks. Now we're gonna tie it onto the rod here. I like using braid. Uh, just about for every type of fishing that I do, but it's very visible to the kingfish and the other fish that are on the beaches when it's clear water. So I like to use about 20 feet of fluorocarbon, 25 or 30 pound test. So we'll just pull out a little chunk of this here. And we're gonna tie this to our braid. That way when these, uh, these fish come up and eyeball the bait, they're not seeing a 50 pound braided line right there in their face. Just tie a blood knot on there, any knot that you like that makes it real streamlined and strong. Now just remember it's real important um, if you're not real familiar with using this single strand braid, anywhere you kink or bend it, it becomes the weak point. And if you make a loop in it and kink it, if you see any kind of kink in that, replace it. Because when you put any sharp tension on there, it's just going to snap real easy. Very strong. Very resilient to toothy critters, but um, but any kink and that's that's a that's a bad deal. So we're gonna keep rolling real quick. I just want to show you. So we ran down the beach. We didn't really see a lot of bait where I found them yesterday. But if you look right here, you can see a huge school of threadfin. Um, we ran down the beach till we found bait. I was a little discouraged. We didn't really see what we were looking for at first. But now we're about an hour and a half into the trip. We got good bait, tons of threadfin, big pods migrating up and down the beach. And uh, we're just gonna set out some baits. We just threw the sabiki right in here. We brought some baits um, from the buoys. And we're gonna just slow troll them through these big uh, schools of threadfin. And I think it's gonna be good. Here, see if you can see those right there. We also wanna look for the, uh, the pelicans, birds diving on there. Um, any kind of sign of life. Uh, and that'll, that'll help you locate where the baits are. So we found some pelicans. Um, we're in about 27 feet of water. It'll vary. They can push all the way up next to the beach and they could go out a little bit, but you're rarely going to find them more than about a mile off the beach. So uh, we'll see how we do. Make sure your rig is lined up so it's streamlined right through the nostrils. Measure this. You don't want it too long or too short. You want there to be a little bit of give. You see that hook slide, slide in that loop right there? Make sure that's that's happening. And then I like to hook it all the way through in the back. 
That way, when you're using this stinger right here, so if you get a short strike by a kingfish, you're gonna hook him. Pop the boat in gear. Usually troll two baits. We'll do one way out back, and then we'll do one kind of close. Do the first one out real far. Want to make sure your drag is really loose. When you, when it gets bit, it's, especially if it's a kingfish, it's going to burn it down. And if your line's too tight, it'll pull those little number four treble hooks. So we've got a light drag. We're going to set it out. I like to put it pretty far. I'll put it close to 100 yards back, maybe about 80 yards. There's some spookier fish out there. Got something on here right away. They're really big and that noise hook, they're really small. Tiny little shark. Oh, kingfish, Sam. Yeah, that's your king. King. Nice. Hello, king. There's the rod. <laughs> that was instant. That was super cool. Look how close we are to the beach. And all we're doing is just, we just put the boat in gear with that little thread fin we put out. And uh, we didn't hit, have any sign of, of any bigger fish, but they're there. Find the bait in the summer next to the beach, and you're going to find all, all sorts of cool fish to catch. Tiny little fella, but super fun. See where that treble got him right there? Look at, see how important it is to have that. Oh, come here, buddy. Look at that stinger hook. That's what tagged him right there in the mouth. The last one. So if we didn't have that, we wouldn't have caught him. Get that clip out there. This little guy go. That's a cool little fish. I love kingfish. All right, you ready? Yep. All right, let's throw another one on. We just threw one out there. Attack as soon as we put the boat in gear. Right. Find it important to drop the boat in gear. Let it get moving before you put your bait out. With these stinger hooks, if, if uh, the bait has free rein, he'll tangle himself up sometimes. So we've got these big schools, a big thread fin up on the surface out here. Here, turn that camera around, see if you can see them out there.
So we're bumping the boat in and out of gear, just kind of just drifting almost, keeping our lines apart with a little bit of speed, but you don't want to troll your baits. You kind of want to slow troll, but you want to just drift them. You see your lines get slack, bump it in gear. You want your bait to do the work. Oh, look at this, look at the baits over here, the serpent. Oh, I can see that in the camera good. So we just got two rods out. We're just kind of just, just bumping our boat in and out of gear and slow trolling. Blue runners and uh, threatening through these floor. Fish on! Woo -hoo 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 -hoo! <laughs> Look at that king! Now you want your drag kind of light and you just let them just let them run. I'm gonna turn the boat around here, try to get up on them. We're gonna keep our one rod out. See if we can get it doubled up here. Yeah, he's oh, ooh, fish on that one, he dropped it. And he's out, he's out a good 350 yards. <laughs> that thing smoked it. But see like, how cool is this? You really don't need like kingfish gear to catch kingfish. Um, you can catch these kingfish and tarpon that we're catching today um, just on just your regular spinning rods. Just make sure you got light enough braided lines so that you can uh, put out a ton of line. I'm going to turn the boat here real quick. And you just baby them. Keep your line real loose, your drag real loose, because we're using those number four treble hooks. You don't do a big hook set when they bite. Uh, you saw that strike there, he just, he just hit it and he ran. He'll hook himself. And you just kind of finesse him in. Nice and easy. So you never know where that treble hook hooks them. You know, a lot of times they'll just hook them in the face and they come slashing by, especially the kingfish. There, so here's a, you know, this is kind of, you know, everyone says it's important, but, you know, I got to experience it here today, even to, you know, drive the point home. But we caught some really nice blue runners and some other bait fish. And we got out and we're fishing these big greenie pods, these big thread fins. And nothing has hit. One, we've got a short strike, but nothing has hit the blue runners or anything else. And man, we've only been fishing for maybe a half an hour. And this is our, uh, our third kingfish. I think it's a kingfish. And all they're eating are the big thread fins that we put out. We're matching the, the hatch, what they're in here feeding on. So just come out, all you need is some sabiki rigs and a cast net, run the beaches, find the bait, catch the bait, fish the bait where you caught the bait. It's that easy. You really don't need to put any work into it. And the more work you put into it, as far as preparation, you know, it's not, it's not going to help you. It's going to hurt you. You want fresh bait, good bait. You want to use the bait that you're fishing and you only want to fish around the bait. It's like a desert out here, unless you're on the big bait schools. Show, show me on the uh, how that stinger hook is so important. Uh -oh. <laughs> and that's why those treble hooks are so important and why you don't have heavy bags. <laughs> <laughs> <It's solid. laughs> We, uh, we, t we tail hooked this guy's a little tired out. We want to grab a couple for the smoker, so I'm going to go ahead and gaff this sucker. Hey guys, well that concludes our course on beach fishing. It's so much fun. Today we've only been out here a few hours. We've got a bunch of kingfish, uh, tarpon, sharks, bonito. We've hooked all sorts of different fish. we got a couple kingfish that we're going to bring home to the smoker. Let me show you those here real quick. Got a couple lines still out. They're a nice size. We got some bigger ones and some smaller ones. We let most of them go. But, uh, I mean, it's just a great way to go spend a morning or an afternoon, bring some fish home. And, you know, you never know what you're going to catch. I've caught sailfish in really close, but the water's clear. It's warm, easy fishing. All you need to do is bring a sabiki rig and a cast net, a couple rigs, wire leader, all sorts of bait fish. It's just fishing at its easiest and finest. Just remember, 
you need to have live bait and you need to be fishing around live bait. As long as you do that, you'll catch these fish.